if I am to trust anyone in this great big world, it's you. Hello friends! About five months ago I put out this video called Things I Love in Books and in that video I asked you for recommendations based on the list of things that I love in books. A strong friendship group. Tense mother-daughter relationship. Music. Forbidden romance. Space training. Fake dating. A good revenge plot. When characters have to relive the same day. Adoption. Isolated. Slice of life. The true identity. Islands. Somebody dies and then 20 years in the future we're finding out the truth. Like survival books that are realistic. A game. Shakespeare. A contemporary plot with a little magical, little supernatural, little fantastical vibe. I needed some ideas of what other books I should be reading. The goal with that was to eventually do this video, to pick five of these books and read them in the next couple weeks and then tell you about them. It's taken me so long because there were 524 comments on that video, which amounted to almost 300 different books being recommended. And with me being my overly aggressively thorough self, I wanted to turn it into a spreadsheet. So I typed out every single recommendation that came my way. Even though there were only 300 books total on the list, a lot of them were recommended over and over and over and over again. So in my spreadsheet, I have the book, the author, which of the things I mentioned that this book specifically relates to. And then I have the number of times that book was mentioned. And then I have the number of times each of those comments with that book being mentioned had a like on it. What is wrong with me? Then I had to further break down this list into books I've already read. There were a lot of great recommendations, but I've already read them. So of the 300-ish books, 36 of them I've already read. Those are right here. Good recommendations, some of them, some of them they're books that I hated, so now I'm scared. So from what we have left, 28 of the books that you suggested to me, just totally randomly off the top of your head, I already have on my TBR shelf. That's this list right here. I'm not going to show you like I could pop up a screenshot of this but I actually don't want to spoil the overall list because I do think with 300 books to choose from that I will be doing this video again. Of the 300, seven of the books were already on my radar so not on my actual shelf but maybe on my goodreads shelf and then again of the 300 47 of the books are ones that i've heard of before and you know aren't on my tbr so i think when choosing the five books from this list that i want to read in the next couple weeks this is the list that's going to be hardest to convince me of because I've already heard of them and I actively like am not interested in them but you recommended them. And then there were 156 books that I have never heard of, have no clue what they are, just am in the dark. So that's this list right here that just keeps going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick five books off this list and I'm gonna read them and I'm gonna tell you what I thought of them and basically it's do I trust your recommendations. I've done Do We Trust Booktubers recommendations, but can I trust you? Alternatively, this is titled like reading books that I'm most likely to like because you know my reading taste. If I am to trust anyone in this great big world, it's you. I do have some guidelines for myself that I wrote way before I even like curated this list. So I wanted two of these books to already be on my TBR because I don't want to just have to buy a million books. I wanted to pick some off here if I could. I wanted to pick one that I've never heard of before, which clearly should be easy. And I wanted to pick one that I would not pick up 
like one that you suggested that I go, oh, I don't even want to add that to my spreadsheet. I don't even want that to be an option. Like I read the synopsis. I'm not interested in this book, but read it anyway, because we know that I love being surprised by a book. I love reading stuff that I don't think I should like and then end up liking it. And I also wrote here that I, I'm going to pick the most mentioned book. So aren't you excited to find out what that is? And then if I do this video again in the future, which I figure I might pick five books every time, I'll pick the next most suggested book. So we might as well start there. Um, interestingly, I think this might surprise you. Well, I guess if you saw that video and you read the comments, you wouldn't be surprised. But it's The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I know a lot of you, wow, a lot of you aggressively want me to read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I don't think that even is in the spreadsheet because it doesn't fit into any of the things that I love in books. So we'll save that for another video. I just want to put that out there before somebody asks me why I'm not reading it because clearly it gets recommended all the time, but not in this context because I shouldn't like that book. It doesn't fit like any of my parameters. So The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle overall got 120 votes. Apparently that book fits a million of my things I love. It features isolation, it features like finding out the truth 20 years later or whatever. It features like reliving the same day over and over again. This sounds like it could be my perfect book. And guess what? If it's the very first thing I put on my list, picking books off my TBR because I actually found it at the thrift store a couple weeks ago and added it without even knowing that it would show up here. This does get recommended to me frequently outside of this video and I still don't even know what it is. But I'm not gonna read the synopsis yet until we have all of the books here. And now there's like 30 other books that were recommended that I already have on my TBR shelf. But in choosing this TBR, I was thinking, I don't just wanna read a bunch of the same stuff. I want to switch up genres. I want to switch up like the reason behind them being recommended. And so I picked a book that I have just recently heard of and hauled. I made this video about how much I love space training books and the comments were overwhelmingly, oh my gosh, check out Nixia. So a couple months ago, I bought this book from Book Outlet. I have a feeling this whole video is going to be around Book Outlet because I need to buy some books and we're gonna see if Book Outlet has them. But I picked up this from Book Outlet and I hauled it a couple months ago and I think I actually put it in my closet. Okay, that just took me <laughs> way too long to find. I don't think I've read the synopsis of this and I'll say like this isn't something that I would have picked up on my own at all, at least based on the cover, the title, because this looks like it's set in space. And I was very specific in saying that I like space training books, but I don't actually want to go to space. So I don't totally know if this fits that. I'm adding it to my TBR. So those are the two just off of my TBR. And now I'm going to pick three other books from the rest of the list. So on the list of ones I've never heard of, I would really like to read an isolation survival type story. And I got recommended this book called Life As We Knew It by Susan Beth Pfeiffer, like a lot. Not a hundred times like this one, but it was recommended a good amount of times. And I remember the comments including that book were very passionate about me reading it. So first we're gonna check book outlet. Not on there. I don't even know what this book looks like. Wait, it's sci-fi dystopian? Pretty generic cover. It's apparently part of a series. Oh, but I didn't wanna read anything about it. Should I just get it? Y'all felt very passionate about it, so I'm just gonna get it. Next pick, one of the things I listed uh, was like games, book with books with games and like truth or dare or dark things. And I got a recommended a lot of books I've already read, but I didn't see very many recommendations for books that I haven't already read, but that is something that I'm especially looking for in my life. So I'm going to scroll through 
and find one. Okay, I only have two to choose from that I got, I think. One of them is called Erebos, and one of them is called Stegs. And for some reason, like, I just, I want to know what that is. Stegs? Does it stand for something? Ooh. Oh my god, this cover is so... Hmm. It's by M.A. Bennett. It's on Book Outlet for just five bucks. Oh, it says One Deadly Weekend. Oh my god, the fact that I don't know anything about this makes me excited. Like, I'm just gonna buy it. Here's the point where I tell you I'm a Book Outlet vlogger friend. I get to order books from them every month, so I might as well find some books that are on here because I already have to want to am going to get books from book outlet this month so let's find another book that's also on book outlet so we can make it a thing i got a lot of recommendations for shakespeare related books which is something i love but i haven't read a ton of but i like i think every book that i read that has that so i'm gonna pick one of those there's this book on my list called the only thing worse than me is you and it says it's by lily anderson who I'm pretty sure is the author of Undead Girl Gang. And I thought that was her debut. But then I think I knew that it wasn't her debut. <laughs> I'm forgetting my own memories. But it says it has the friendship group that I like. And it was recommended because it has Shakespeare stuff. Which is exciting. So we're going to search for that. Oh, that is an ugly cover. <laughs> oh, wow. $2.00. Okay, book outlet. Okay, team. I trust you. Is that five? That's five. I had so many other ones bolded that I was thinking about. But I think we've got like five different things. We've got space training. We've got uh, multiple lives. We've got survival and apparently a million other things. We've got Shakespeare and friendship. And we've got the dark games. So I really think this is a good TBR. It's going to keep my interest. We've got a lot of different things going on. Everything's going to be five stars, right? So thank you so much for your recommendations. And I'll see you in a second when all the books have arrived. And I can show them to you. And we can find out what they actually are. Because that'd be nice. All right, it's been a couple weeks. I finally have all the books. So like you know... I already have these two. Then I picked up from the library a very little copy of Life As We Knew It. Then we've got my package from Book Outlet. With the exception of the library book, I am pretty certain that both of these books are currently on Book Outlet, as well as the two, obviously, that are in the Book Outlet box. So if you'd like to order anything, maybe you wanna wait, until you know my thoughts and if you want to pick up these books the link will be down there to my vlogger friend page and you can easily shop everything I've ever gotten from there here's the first one I wasn't expecting a hardcover for some reason the only thing worse than me is you it looks like a comic book there's two people almost kissing another hardcover a little bit smaller called stags this is the one i'm most excited to see what the heck it is i'm gonna start with nixia because i'm honestly worried that this is set in space if this is set in space and you have betrayed me i will be fine <laughs> i was gonna say i'll be mad but you know i won't Skip ahead if you already know what all these books are about because I'm literally just reading the synopsis with you. To you. For you. For me. Emmett Atwater agrees to leave Earth behind when Babel Communications offers him a fortune. The catch? He has to launch into deep space to get it. Have I read this before? One of the ten selected recruits Emmett boards the company's spaceship and sets course for a planet that Babel has kept hidden from the rest of the world. Every training session is a ruthless competition, oh, love it, where friendships are tested and enemies are made. Love it! Each recruit must earn the right to travel down to the planet of Eden, where they will mine Nixia, a substance that has quietly become the most valuable material in the universe. Okay, I'm still unclear of how much this book takes place training 
which is what I want, and in space, which is fine if it's not the entire book. Could be great. I know it's a series. Then we've got The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which I do realize I said multiple times the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I'm assuming due to the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. How did that happen, by the way? That in some countries they renamed it the seven and a half deaths now let's find out what it's about it is meant to be a celebration but it ends in tragedy as fireworks explode overhead evelyn hardcastle the young and beautiful daughter of the house is killed but evelyn will not die just once until aiden one of the guests summoned to the black heath for the party can solve her murder the day will repeat itself over and over again, every time ending with the fateful pistol shot. I love it! The only way to break the cycle is to identify the killer. But each time the day begins again, Aiden wakes in the body of a different guest? And someone is desperate to stop him ever escaping Blackheath. Then I picked up from the library, Life As We Knew It. This looks so old. When a meteor hits the moon, and knocks it closer in orbit to the earth nothing will ever be the same worldwide tidal waves earthquakes volcanic eruptions and that's just the beginning that's it that's the whole blurb okay i'm gonna check goodreads because i'm confused first of all when did this come out it looks like a 2005 kind of book 2006 whoa I'm talented. Okay, this is a little different. Miranda's disbelief turns to fear in a split second when a meteor knocks the moon closer to Earth. How should her family prepare for the future when worldwide tsunamis wipe out the coast, earthquakes rock the continent? Summer turns to Arctic winter. Miranda, her two brothers, and their mother retreat to the unexpected safe haven of their sunroom, where they subsist on stockpiled food and limited water in the warmth of a wood-burning stove. Told in journal entries, this is the heart-pounding story of Miranda's struggle to hold on to the most important resource of all, hope, in an increasingly desperate and unfamiliar world. Well, that's nice. Next, we've got The Only Thing Worse Than Me Is You by Lily Anderson. I loved Undead Girl Gang so much. I couldn't be more excited to read another Lily Anderson. Like, this worked out so well. Contemporary romance? Shakespeare. That's what it was. Trixie Watson has two very important goals for senior year. To finally save enough to buy the set of Doctor Who figurines at the local comic book store. And to place third in her class and knock Ben West and his horrendous new mustache that he spent all summer growing down to number four. Trixie will do anything to get her name ranked over Ben's, including give up sleep and comic books. Well, maybe not comic books, but definitely sleep. Still don't know how it's inspired by the bard. It's probably, it doesn't have references, but it's probably like a retelling, kind of like how 10 Things I Hate About You is a retelling of The Taming of the Shrew. This would be Much Ado About Nothing. So I am a little worried that this has to do with um, fandom culture. It's not something that I go out of my way to consume. It's not something I love in books. It's not why I like, say, Radio Silence or Lies on Her Monsters. But it is the reason I didn't really like Fangirl or Geekerella. Lastly is Stags. This is actually the most intriguing book just upon looking at it. It was nearly half term when the envelope came. This has to do with a game, I just remembered. Of course, this being Stags, what does that stand for? The invitation was slid silently under the door. Inside was an embossed card. Huntin', shootin', fishin', that's the card. I, and I also just realized I'm reading this and not the inside jacket. You're invited to spend just titium at Long Cross Hall, Cumberland. Coaches departing stags at 5 p.m. Friday, RSVP. Coaches? What is this? I still don't know. At St. Aiden the Great School or, St oh, St. Aiden the Great School is stags. New things and new people are to be avoided. 
the grandeur of this boarding school and the prestige of the students' bloodlines seem surreal to Greer McDonald. New kid at school, a scholarship student who recently transferred to Staggs, Greer is ignored at best and mocked at worst by the school's most admired circle of friends, the medievals. Is Greer a boy or a girl? Greer is taken by surprise when the medievals send her an invitation to an exclusive weekend retreat at the private family estate of their unofficial leader, Henry de Warlencourt. Rumor has it the invitee who most impresses the group will be given the privilege of becoming a medieval themselves. Here we have all five books. I don't know where to start. I'm gonna start with stags. I am very intrigued. I've never heard anyone talk about it so is that because not many people are reading it or not many people liked it so I've never heard it recommended before. So right off the bat in this book our main character is a serious girl hater who also doesn't seem to understand what feminism is but we'll get to that. This says she has caramel colored hair extensions and a perfect coffee colored tan but underneath all that varnish She's really nice. <laughs> what? As if girls who pay attention and care about their appearance, like, should automatically not be expected to be nice. <laughs> I like to think of myself as a strong feminist girl, but since Henry had invited me to Long Cross, I'd been letting the sisterhood down a bit by obsessing about what I would wear. As if caring about your clothes makes you not a feminist. And there's already been like three other instances of her saying like, I'm not a feminist because of this. This girl's not a feminist, not a real feminist. Also strange is a scene where this group of kids is bullying this boy. He's from Rajasthan, but they call him the Punjab prince and say a bunch of other places where he has to be from because he's brown. They call him a little shit and then someone else says not little he's a long brown shit. The start of the next chapter, chapter three from Greer's point of view, begins with the medievals which is the group of kids who are like better than everyone apparently that she's trying to join by attending the blood games. The medievals were not straightforward racists. Nothing so simple. No, I'm pretty sure they are. Also, I cannot even begin to count the number of times the word savage is used. So those are writing choices that I find distracting. But the plot storyline itself, I'm still interested to see where it goes. So that's what's happening. I'm just over halfway through Stags and there has been no real game so far. All they've done is kill a ton of animals, which I guess I should have gathered by the title or the description, but it's just a lot of like, here's how to hunt animals and then here's vivid explanations of dying animals and I still don't understand the game. I guess these, pe these people have been invited to this hunting, fishing, shooting, whatever event and then they're going to choose someone at the end to join their group or whatever but it hasn't been explained like there have been no rules. They haven't talked about why they're adding someone, when they're adding someone, how they're adding someone. So it's missing the game element which is why I wanted to read it and it's got a lot of murder I'd rather not read. I guess I'd rather read human murder, which says something about me. So I just finished my first book for this challenge and I'm now realizing the issues with this challenge. This concept would have been totally fine if I enjoyed everything that I read, but this is one of the worst books. I've ever read and it feels like a personal like thing now with the people who recommended it. I just want you to know that I appreciate the recommendation so much like I understand where it came from and I'm really glad that you liked the book or anybody liked this book. I'm very upset about it because I thought this video was going to be full of five-star reviews and the first book I read was 
one star and i don't give out one stars very often i don't think the game was well explained i don't think it was well done i didn't find it interesting at the same time i found the stakes too low and too high the characters in here were some of the stupidest people i've ever read about honestly like i'm so sorry if there was anything I genuinely enjoyed about this, I would be focusing on the positive things and telling you those, but I can't think of a single thing that I like. I'm gonna give you a spoiler. I honestly like would not recommend you read this. So skip ahead to this time if you don't wanna hear this and you're still interested in this, like do it, do your thing, enjoy, live your best life. So these people get invited to try out to be a part of this group, but they're, it's not really a tryout, the rules aren't explained. They're not even participating in some of the activities. Basically, the challenge is like to kill the most animals in one weekend, but the people competing are the people already part of the club, which like, I don't understand. Then, blah, 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 it turns out the people who are invited are being hunted, but none of them actually die by the end, so like the stakes are pretty low. The person who does die at the end, which the book starts out saying like, I'm a murderer. The three people who we all went together were all murderers, but what actually happened at the end is that the leader of this group which is actually a secret cult that goes back to like the 1600s the entire school is in on it by the way he commits suicide by jumping off a waterfall and he gives this big long villainous speech that you know i hate how the order will go on without me and he just jumps off the waterfall and then they go back to the school and they reveal the truth about this cult and like the guy who runs the school gives the school to these three 17 year olds and he's like you're now in charge of the school and you can make it whatever you want i can't i can't they have a whole plan for how to kill the main character and she finds out about the plan and instead of like running away from this house which she could have easily done she decides to go on the boat ride anyway alone with this boy who she knows is trying to kill her and she basically like to save herself she puts on a wetsuit and tells the boy she can't swim. And so they go out on the boat and he tries to kill her, but she has a wetsuit on so she's not cold and she can actually swim. So then she swims to shore. But if she didn't need to do that, she could have just like left. Overall, it just wasn't well plotted. Like so many things happened in such a short time period that those things could have been the more interesting parts that they were like finding out and like going into libraries and finding books and looking into the history of things everything was just like so convenient and unrealistic just so like more dramatic things could continue to happen that were unrealistic i can't believe this happened i can't believe i ended up with a one star read in this video i'm more upset that i have to tell you that I rated something one star than actually rating something one star. Like, I don't care, I'm moving on. But the fact that I have to post this video now and tell you that like, I hated a recommendation, that's so upsetting. Now let's move on. I think the right choice is to read a book that was already on my TBR because I can't blame anyone else but myself for having that book. Okay, today I am starting in on Nixia. If this turns out to be what I'm hoping it is, it's gonna be the perfect read right now. I need some sci-fi in my life, but not like high sci-fi. I think this is going to meet my expectations. Like, let's go into it with a totally positive mindset. 50 pages into Nixia, and I don't have any real thoughts so far. No like negative or positive thoughts. I'm just kind of experiencing it. Something interesting that this book isn't explaining is how these 10 teens were chosen for this space exploration, which in the other books I've read like this, they spend a good amount of time explaining like their background in school, how they found out about the program, how they were invited to the program, their qualifications, like what they're interested in. We are only following one character in this book. His name is Emmett. Really, it's just been 50 pages of Emmett explaining how everyone looks. Considering I don't know how these people were chosen, it makes me not understand 
why 10 people were chosen. They're taking 10 teens to the planet, but then only eight of them in the span of this space travel, there's challenges and eight of them are gonna get to go to the planet, which seems weird. Like if you're gonna invite 10, you'd think it would be the best 10. And if you're trying to find the best eight, you'd think you'd invite more like 30, 40 to find the best eight. This is also definitely uh, a lot more fantastical than just science fiction. The substance Nixia is basically like if you've seen Alex Mack, I envision it like those little puddly silver things. And I thought it was just like some substance that is worth a lot. So they're going to this other planet to steal it from uh, the people who live on that planet. They're going to mine for it and only teens can because the people on that planet uh, don't hurt young people apparently. But the substance is actually like something that, I don't know how to explain it, based on their mind control can change this blob in their hand into whatever they want, like gloves, like a marble. It can change forms just based on like what you want it to do. I'm now a hundred pages in. I still feel like, mm, about this book, it hasn't done any, just lost my page. <laughs> it hasn't done anything to bug me or impress me okay and i still wish i knew literally anything about the world we know this is set in the future and there have been all of these advances to technology and like magical things clearly based on this space program but i want to know like what's happening in the real world have there also been advances in technology has the world like been falling apart are there not many people left and that's why they chose these kids how did they even meet these kids did they fill out an application so it's just leaving me a little disconnected and i just wish i had more information all right mixia by i have discovered is pronounced scotch rankin my apologies i rate this yawn stars out of five I honestly don't really know what to do here because I have now disliked two books recommended by people and it feels like I'm deliberately shitting on people's recommendations and I don't like this feeling and I need to cancel the whole video. I wish I liked Nixia. It's one of the most diverse casts I've ever read, which I really appreciate. There are people from all over the world, all different backgrounds. And so I think people will see themselves in this and appreciate that. But there's nothing else I liked about it. I didn't like any of the characters. I never felt connected to them. This did 100% take place in space, though you could argue that it's not really, like it doesn't matter where it's set because it's still space training. So I wouldn't say I disliked that part. I just want to note that it was set in space. It was one of the most repetitive books that I've ever read. There was this, literally the first page I just flipped to show you an example, has a scorecard on it. Every single page had a scorecard. Our main character was obsessed with this scorecard, which makes sense, but it was just so repetitive. It was like they would go through Honestly, I still don't even, un I don't think things were very well explained. I don't understand what they were really doing versus what was a simulation. Sometimes I would think that people were fighting and then he would say my avatar and I was just confused. It was like, we're fighting, here's the score sheet. I'm fighting people, here's the score sheet. Someone's injured, score sheet. We're battling, score sheet. We're learning how to drill, score sheet. It was like uh, that training section of Divergent but imagine that being the whole book. And then it tried to make some relationships happen, but like there was a whole relationship just on one page. It was like people looked at each other, they fell in love and they fell out of love in like one scene. A lot of choices just seemed a little flippant. Suffice to say, I won't be continuing in the series, though I'm sure someone will tell me that the series gets better, that more things are explained, that I'll enjoy it going forward, and that there are probably certain things that are kept a secret for a reason and then are revealed in future books. Also, I wish like 
the topic of colonization was covered but again i'm assuming that's something that will be talked about one would hope in future books so i just went for a hike and i started the audiobook it's very young i can't remember the age of the girl who's narrating early somewhere in her teens so it just took a second to get used to her um it's diary entries and she's chronicling her experience audiobook is good but um i'm gonna keep reading just with my eyeballs and, and then if i don't finish it today i'm gonna listen to it like on the drive to work and go back and forth probably with the physical book and the audiobook reading update it's the next day i am almost done with life as we knew it and by almost i mean about three quarters mm, no two thirds of the way through this is seriously flying black am i okay this is seriously flying by and i'm enjoying it it's not like the best post-apocalyptic kind of story that i've read but i think for its age range and like the time that it came out it's good i really enjoy it i'll finish it soon and i'll let you know my final thoughts okay you're gonna have to hang out with me while i pack for camping i hope you can hear me well maybe i'll just kind of hop on the bed i have absolutely no time we leave for camping tonight or tomorrow don't look at all my underwear and i have plans to read my next two books during our camping trip i hope that works out but i did finish life as we knew it i have it right here and it's kind of a weird book to rate because there was nothing i didn't like about it i think i read you the synopsis it's about a girl and her family and kind of the end of the world i love apocalyptic books that aren't about fantastical things or science fictiony things i want my post-apocalyptic stuff to be realistic i don't want aliens monsters robots i just want like the powers out we have to survive the elements and each other and that's exactly well it wasn't so much each other it was more just the elements it was getting really cold because of the moon's movement it was kind of like the best of circumstances for this family because they got in early went to the grocery store got a whole bunch of food they all had each other so it was pretty light for an end of the world type of book at least compared to the ones i've read i think it's for a pretty young audience and it feels weird to write that because i'm clearly not the intended audience and so saying something like oh the writing wasn't sophisticated it's just dumb because like it's not supposed to be but since it was clearly like the character's voice it was her diary entries i think it was pretty authentic i didn't love it on a level that's like oh my god can't wait to recommend this to everybody it's the best post-apocalyptic thing i've ever read but i feel like i have to read it high because it didn't do anything wrong it was perfect for what it was and we're on an upswing so the other two books i will read while we're camping those two books are right here this one i found as an audiobook as well i always have a really hard time falling asleep camping so i need music or an audiobook or white noise so this is going to be perfect so i might try to read a little bit on the drive but i always say that and then it never happens so i'll keep you updated we're officially on the road i listened to the first like five seconds of the audiobook to make sure it was working and it's evil in hardcastle so i'm gonna start this reading update we've been camping for a couple days it's been pretty slow getting through this you can't really see because it's deckled pages i'm on page 80 so the first like 40 pages were super confusing but in a good way i appreciate that this book didn't like describe what was happening before it was happening it could have easily been like here's the murder that takes place and now i'm going to exist in all of these different points of view instead we just started in a point of view and it was confusing and weird and then it started to make sense which was great
We're on our way home from camping. The book is going well. I didn't finish it, I know. This is honestly just taking all of my brain power. Like, it requires a lot of focus with all these different characters and all these different things going on. So I'm gonna finish it probably for the drive. There's like 100 pages left. I'm really liking it, but honestly, it depends on the ending. Just from my reading experience, I'm gonna need a pretty good payoff to make the arduous reading process worth it. I am enjoying it, but it's it's a lot. It's a lot of perspectives, a lot of characters, a lot of remembering things. So, wow, this book. I need to do an overly specific book recommendations video on books that required all of my brain power. This being one of them. I definitely give this book a lot of credit for keeping me so engaged with everything that was happening that I didn't even have time to sit around and theorize what was happening. Because normally in mysteries, all I'm doing is thinking, if the if a book's not quite good, I spend a lot of time thinking like, oh, I wonder if it's this, this, or this ending. I wonder if this person's the killer. I'm gonna make a flow chart to remember who did what so I can like predict the ending. But it's a good mystery when I don't even have the brain capacity to do my own thing with it. Like I'm just experiencing the book and whatever happens, happens. The ending was great. Whether or not this is predictable for a lot of people, I have no idea. Uh, for me, I wasn't even thinking about what was happening. So I really liked all of the twists that happened at the end. And though this book felt long, I definitely wouldn't look back on it and say like, this part wasn't necessary or this part was repetitive. I feel like everything in here was necessary to the plot. So I think if you generally already enjoy slow whodunit type mysteries and if you like that little supernatural type element that I love like highly recommend. I don't know my final reading. This is another one that like it did nothing wrong but this isn't a new favorite book of all time. I'm not going to be talking about this until the day I die but it was solid. Like, I hate giving the decimal points, but I want to give it like a 4.5. It's great. So, considering this was the most mentioned book, like, hooray! I can trust you! I'm just kidding. I feel like this video is going to come off such the wrong way, but I just have to live with it. This was an amazing recommendation, and all of you who have not only been telling me this, to read this in that video, but have been telling me to read it for a year or two, like, Thank you, you're right, it was great. Now, we're moving on to the last book. What is it called? The only thing worse than me is you. I don't know why, I can never remember what this is called. 30 pages in, it's seemingly another book that has its idea of feminism all skewed. Oh, I just ate a live wire and now my teeth are blue. Sorry. So the main character is criticizing her friends, saying that they're not true feminists, because they're interested in boys and want to get a boyfriend. The main character, seemingly referring to herself as a feminist, then goes ahead and says, we're the only girls on campus not dressed up like trampy tramps. So I'm not sure if the main character is supposed to grow from these opinions or if these are the opinions of the book. You know what I mean? The story so far is Fine. There definitely is a strong witty banter between the main girl, I can't even remember her name, Trixie, and a boy named Ben. So it seems to be like a hate to love thing, which I enjoy usually, which is probably why you recommended it to me. A lot of pop culture references because it's about like comic book nerds and nerd culture and fandom stuff. Some of it's going over my head. I know I'm supposed to understand what it is, but I think there's a lot of references to like Star Trek, Star Wars, there's Game of Thrones, there's Supernatural, there's lots of stuff that I don't consume that I think people who like watch TV, actually watch TV would get and appreciate. So final thoughts on the only thing worse than me is you. I'm about to film another video, which is why I have an actual like setup and I'm not just vlogging. I also have really low energy, I just have to say. 
<laughs> I've had a headache since getting back from camping. It's really bad and it won't go away. So I'm sorry if I'm not totally here. So um, I ended up giving it three stars. It's kind of one of those books that was fine. She obviously becomes interested in a boy really for the first time and I think it kind of changes her opinions. It's not on page like she doesn't say oh I was wrong all along that my friend shouldn't be obsessed with boys but I think that you can kind of conclude that. With that said this is not a what a contemporary romance it's just like why a contemporary the relationship in here is a very minor storyline in my opinion it does push forward a lot of the plot but the main plot is basically just like school rankings they're in this school for geniuses and they want to be in like the top two of their class and then there's somebody who is getting other people expelled and like sabotaging people and hacking into systems and doing all this stuff I would say that is a big part of the plot. Also the fandom culture stuff is like a huge portion of the book. So those things, not necessarily things that would make me pick up a book, like if we're listing all the things that I love in books, that's not why I would read this book. The reasons that I would read this book, the hate to love, the Shakespeare quality, and the friendship group, I don't think are necessarily at the forefront and carried enough of the book on their own to make me like love this book. Also if you know the play, like if you're reading this because it's based on Shakespeare, I think uh, some things might lose you because certain plot points hinge on being like plot twists and they wouldn't be if you know the story already. But if you know nothing about Much Ado About Nothing, then I think you'll probably enjoy this even more, which is interesting for a retelling because I think retellings are mostly for the people who love that thing and they want it retold. I guess if you don't care about things being surprising and twisty, I just think the things that are surprising and twisty are cool and would be even cooler if I didn't know they were coming. Anyway, this was fine. Appreciate the recommendation. Uh, I think I've kind of explained the fact that I I don't like being negative about books in general. I especially don't like being negative about books in this capacity where it's like directly directed at someone. These are the five books I read. I think all that we've learned from this is that I'm still a picky bitch. So that's the video. Thank you very much for watching. Definitely feel free to recommend anything else. Anyone who takes their time to comment anything on any of my videos, I know that that is an amount of effort from you and I appreciate it and respect it. And I love you a lot as a friend. Thank you for recommendations, even if I don't always love them and I hope you still like me and I'll see you later, bye.